Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of the Greatest Warrior Lü Bu series as we continue with episode 2, titled Serving Dong Zhuo. Last time we left off as Lü Bu followed Ding Yuan to the capital on Grand General He Jin's summon. Yet not long after they arrived, the eunuchs would make the first move as He Jin would be assassinated on the doorsteps of the Imperial Palace. And even though Yuan Shao and Cao Cao would avenge He Jin's death and purge the palace of all the remaining eunuchs, the core group of the ten eunuchs managed to escape in time, with both the child emperor Liu Bian and his younger brother Liu Xie as hostages. But fate would have it that the eunuchs would run into the waiting arms of Dong Zhuo and herald in a new age of tyranny, as Dong Zhuo would soon return to the capital as the savior of the emperor, as the former troops of He Jin and He Miao, who are now leaderless, were soon absorbed by Dong Zhuo. Now in these early days, before Dong Zhuo would consolidate power, Ding Yuan remained a threat, as he had been named by He Jin as the Zhi Jun Yu, which is the commander of the northern armies that is in charge of the city defense of the capital. Therefore, Ding Yuan became this lone obstacle to Dong Zhuo's complete takeover of the capital. And in order to overcome Ding Yuan, Dong Zhuo resorted to bribery. As after finding out that Ding Yuan trusted his head secretary Lü Bu, Dong Zhuo bribed Lü Bu with the promise that Lü Bu would be promoted to Ding Yuan's former position as the lieutenant of the Imperial Cavalry. And in that same night, Lü Bu took Ding Yuan's head and joined forces with Dong Zhuo. Now, in the Romance of the Three Kingdom, the bribe offer here included the red hair, the sky piercer, and gold. But historically speaking, the red hair doesn't make its first appearance until after Dong Zhuo's death, and given the lifespan of a war horse and the bribe for Dong Zhuo's betrayal down the line as references, it actually makes more sense that it didn't take very much to convince Lu Bu here to betray his master. So in the end, according to historical record and what I believe happened, was the mere promise of a promotion to lieutenant was sufficient for Lu Bu to take the head of Ding Yuan, who as we mentioned before, had just been Lu Bu's boss for roughly a year. And despite showing favoritism towards Lu Bu, Lu Bu was still just head secretary, with not much hope for farther advancement, given that Ding Yuan also comes from a poor background and did not have the necessary connections at court, and the only person that he could rely on for future promotions, which was He Jin, was now dead. And sure enough, after killing Ding Yuan, Dong Zhuo kept his word and made Lü Bu the lieutenant of the Imperial Cavalry. And after getting to know Lü Bu and seeing his horse riding and archery skills, Dong Zhuo nicknamed him the Flying General and offered to become his adopted father as their relationship quickly escalated. Before long, Lü Bu was promoted again by Dong Zhuo to become the general of the household and even gave him a second marquis title. Now, despite being so trusted by Dong Zhuo and his elevation in rank, Lü Bu was not given any army to command as most of Dong Zhuo's forces were still commanded by generals Dong Zhuo had brought with him from his home province in the Liang province. And during the initial stages of the coalition against Dong Zhuo's campaigns, Lü Bu would only take part in one battle as a cavalry lieutenant serving under General Hu Zhen against the forces of Sun Jian. Now, if you're interested in this particular battle, please check out either our Dong Zhuo lore series or our Sun Jian lore series. As for the purpose of this series here, we just need to note that at the time, Hu Zhen, who hails from a rather notable Liang province clan, had just assumed command of this force after the previous commander, Xu Rong, was relieved due to some politically motivated reshuffling of the army following news of a potential revolt against Dong Zhuo. Unlike Xu Rong, who had already beaten Cao Cao and Sun Jian's forces in prior battles, Hu Jin was not respected by the troops yet. So in order to establish his authority, 
Hu Jin had informed his 5,000 men that he would execute one of the lieutenants to enforce some discipline into this group. And being a lieutenant himself, Lü Bu naturally disliked Hu Jin and feared for his own life. So together with the other lieutenants, they purposely sounded false alarms of attack throughout the night prior to battle, then finally fed false information to Hu Jin the next day about the enemy's strength, leading to an outlandish defeat at the hand of Sun Jian's army, which was still in the middle of recovering from their prior loss to Xu Rong. And it was also at this battle that Sun Jian's forces would slay Hua Xiong, who was also not historically a general, but rather just an officer in charge of supplies and logistics. But more importantly, this would be the first victory by the coalition forces against Dong Zhuo and open the path for Sun Jian to take Luoyang soon after. And speaking of the fall of Luoyang, even though Dong Zhuo had already migrated the courts and burned down much of the city, Lü Bu's forces were ordered to remain behind to defend the city, even though it's highly suspected that the true purpose of their force was to be in charge of tomb looting, as there were countless treasures within the imperial tombs surrounding the city. But regardless, Lü Bu was the one in charge of the city defense when Sun Jian's forces launched their final assault, and without putting up much resistance, Lü Bu lost the fight and retreated away from Luoyang as he made his escape back to Chang'an to rejoin Dong Zhuo. So in terms of military track record, Lü Bu is now 0 for 2 so far, with him actively sabotaging his first battle, while easily losing his second battle without putting up much of a fight. And of course, with Hulao Gate being a fictional location during the Han Dynasty, as it would not be constructed until the Tang Dynasty, the epic tale of dueling against the three Othorn brothers of Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei was also fictional, as Liu Bei never even took part in the coalition against Dong Zhuo historically. But his shortcomings did not lose him any favor with Dong Zhuo, who still leaned heavily on Lü Bu, even more so once the court were set up in Chang'an, as Dong Zhuo became well aware of the danger he was under in terms of being assassinated. So Lü Bu essentially became Dong Zhuo's bodyguard in Chang'an, shadowing his adoptive father wherever he went. However, this type of exposure would bring other issues, as Dong Zhuo had a short temper, and with Lü Bu around him all the time, there were bound to be times when the anger would spill over to Lü Bu, as it was recorded that Dong Zhuo once had thrown a short ji at Lü Bu. Thankfully, Lü Bu was nimble enough to dodge from harm's way, but such instances proved that the relationship between Lü Bu and Dong Zhuo was not all rosy, especially with Dong Zhuo growing more paranoid by the day. Another issue that rose was an affair between Lü Bu and one of the maidens working in Dong Zhuo's quarter. Although I believe this maiden was simply a servant girl and not one of Dong Zhuo's concubines, it was recorded that Lü Bu was extremely worried that Dong Zhuo would find out about this relationship. And of course, with Diao Chan being a fictional character who did not exist historically, it was actually this affair with the nameless maiden that would inspire the honeypot trap used by Wang Yun to break up Lü Bu and Dong Zhuo in the novels. And speaking of Wang Yun, historically speaking, Wang Yun's plot with Lü Bu was much simpler and something we'll cover in our next episode as this episode comes to an end here. And we'll return next time to cover Lü Bu's betrayal of Dong Zhuo and his short-lived control of Chang'an under Wang Yun. So hopefully you all enjoy this episode, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!